Howdy folks, Brother Jim reporting here at End Times Prophecy News from Alex Jones at InfoWars. Iranian lawmaker says 50 are now dead from the coronavirus in single city. Largest number of deaths in single country outside of China. Say what? Largest number of deaths in any single country outside China. I got some good news for you folks brothers and sisters in Christ. Heading into yet another week where headlines across the world are dominated by the coronavirus outbreak, it looks like the market has finally accepted the fact that this virus isn't just the flu as U.S. stocks look headed for a sharp drop at the open set to build on their losses from last week. Following the release of the latest batch of infection numbers from China and South Korea, the focus Monday morning has shifted back to Iran, where the true scope of the outbreak is rapidly becoming apparent. As of yesterday, since today is Tuesday, news reports claim the death toll in the city of Qualms has already hit 50. If true, that would be far away and the largest number of deaths in a single country outside mainland China, at least that we know of. Iran alone has seemingly tripled the death toll ex-China overnight, even if the deaths haven't yet been counted by Johns Hopkins, SCMP, or the other running databases that have been cataloging the crisis. As far as confirmed cases go, the toll remains at 12, uh, still higher than any other single country ex-China. Still at 12, it's still higher than any other single country except except for China. At least that's what the Iranian health ministry is insisting on. But according to the lawmaker who spoke to the Associated Press, the true death toll is 50. A staggering people have died. Excuse me. A staggering 50 people have died in the Iranian city of Qom from the new coronavirus this month. The lawmaker was quoted as saying on Monday, even as the health ministry insisted only 12 deaths have been recorded to date in the country. The new death toll reported by the Qom representative Ahmad Aramabadi Farahani is significantly higher than the latest number of nationwide confirmed cases of infections that Iranian officials had reported just a few hours earlier, which stood at 12 deaths out of 47 cases, according to State TV. Health Ministry spokesman Iraj Harichi rejected the Qom lawmakers' claims, insisting the death toll from the virus remains at 12. However, he raised the number of confirmed cases from the virus to 61. Some 900 other suspected cases are being tested. What? Those are a lot higher numbers, aren't they? Quote, no one is qualified to discuss this sort of news at all, Harichi said, adding that lawmakers have no access to coronavirus statistics and could be mixing figures on deaths related to other diseases like the flu with the new virus which first emerged in China in December. What did I tell you about what's going on with the regular flu season? It's worse than ever. Even in America, many thousands of people are dying in America this year from the regular flu and that if they're not doing any testing in America or in most of these nations for the coronavirus, well, then we just deem them as a regular flu kill-off, don't we? While the health ministry insists that lawmakers don't have access to official statistics, we suspect that the representative of a community would know roughly how many people have succumbed to the virus in his community. That is not at all far-fetched. The same lawmakers said another 250 have been quarantined in the qualms, which based on the death toll, sounds like not nearly enough. And of course, mixing up deaths with the flu is an excuse we've seen before. Still, the number of deaths compared to the number of confirmed infections from the virus is higher in Iran than in any other country, including China and South Korea, where this outbreak is far more widespread. I wonder why. Is it because Iran is just lying to their people as always under the regime? Farahani, the lawmaker from Qom, was quoted in local media saying more than 250 people are quarantined in the city, which is a popular place of religious study for Shiites from across Iran and other countries. Wait a minute, if you don't know anything about the Shiites and the, um, I forgot the other faction, um, 
uh, pardon me, but the Shiites, though, you need to understand the Shiite faction are the most dangerous radical of Islam. They're the ones that create most of the radical Islamic terrorists in the world. He spoke following a session in Parliament in Tehran on Monday and was quoted by the ILNA and other semi-official news agencies. When it comes to disappointing news about the outbreak, Iran isn't alone. We also saw some more numbers out of South Korea last night. Another 231 confirmed cases brings the total to 833. In other news, the world is still waiting for an update from the WHO propaganda team about what's happening on the ground in Wuhan. They're late to deliver their briefing, which was supposed to start at six. Instead, we bring you this report from the Epoch Times, Jennifer Zhang, in keeping with Zhang's recent record of signal boosting some of the most important stories from on the ground in Wuhan. Now we know why so many extra cops were deployed to Wuhan. More than 1,000 local police got infected. What? with the coronavirus. Meanwhile, Stars and Stripes, the official chronicler of America's military, published a report about American soldiers at Camp Walker, a base wearing face masks and gloves and toting thermometers instead of guns. If you don't know where, I believe this Camp Walker is in South Korea. And we've already had people uh, there was a woman, elderly woman, who went to Camp Walker and went, uh, well, she, she uh, got the coronavirus in and around Camp Walker. Now, so I told you there was some good news, didn't I? Okay. Well, I gave you a, a brief glimpse of that in the last video in the biblical standpoint. What's going on with Israel and the coronavirus? Well, three days ago, Israel confirms first coronavirus case and cruise ship returnee. Hmm, maybe this is why the world is going to come. God is going to bring all the nations against Israel. First coronavirus case in cruise ship returning. How are they work dealing with it? Are they doing it like us where they're not even testing people? From Jerusalem, from MSN News, Israel confirmed Friday its first case of new coronavirus in a citizen who flew home from Japan earlier this week after being quarantined on the stricken cruise ship Diamond Princess. That's not really a quarantine, though. Quote, one of the passengers who returned home from the cruise ship in Japan tested positive in a checkup by the Health Ministry Central Laboratory, a ministry statement said. A total of 15 Israelis were among the passengers quarantined on the board of Diamond Princess, of whom 11 have flown home. So four were left, I guess. The others all tested negative for the virus. The returning Israelis had all been placed in a quarantine for 14 days at the Sheba Medical Center near Tel Aviv. We know that it's actually up to 27 days that they should be in quarantine. They are in full isolation, Dr. Gili Regev Yoke, director of the hospital's infectious diseases unit, in, in many ways like a jail. We try to make it as best as we could to have them in a very nice and comfortable place but very isolated. The woman who tested positive for the virus is not sick. You okay at it? She is totally healthy. She feels she is asymptomatic, but she is carrier of the virus. The other four Israelis who were on board the Diamond Princess are still in Japan. At the start of the month, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said it was inevitable, said the COVID-19 outbreak, which first emerged in China, which would reach Israel. He urged health authorities to focus on developing a vaccine. Okay, so we're not going to go into this too much. Now, what do we see as a general picture here? Okay, we don't really, can't really trust the authorities, can we? But what do we see reporting out of America? Very few people have died. Iran has now at least 50 have died. Iran is a nation of 80 million versus 233 million in the United States. Israel has one person with it and nobody died. Whereas God's people, I've already always taught you that God's people are Israel and 
that God would take away the kingdom of God as Matthew 21 Jesus says I think it's Matthew 22 or 1 but I think it's 21 how he will take away the kingdom of God and give it on to another nation and that nation is United States of America, who bringeth forth the fruits, approving their faith by their works, by spreading the gospel throughout the world. And that has happened for hundreds of years. Okay, so we see a lot of conflicting reports in America about this coronavirus. But as far as deaths go, what is really happening? We don't know. We really don't know how many people, okay? But what I'm trying to tell you here is this. God is protecting his people. So we will finish with the famous Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. The coronavirus is a pestilence, man-made virus in a laboratory. Someone posted in my, my threads that it was actually made in Wuhan you know, man-made in Wuhan, and uh, it accidentally dropped out of the vial and infected everyone. Very possibly true, okay? And this is what I say. You see, that's all part of God, and, and they wanted to use it on America. God said, give them a cup of what they are trying to give to us, because just like Revelation chapter 18 says, give unto her a double portion of the cup she gave unto us. And then that cup is the blood of the saints and prophets. Death, you see. But you see, that's the seven years of great tribulation. We are living in the church age dispensation of grace. God is giving you a sign of what is to come. He is working it the way he wants. He brought Lucifer, Satan, the, the devil, into the Garden of Eden from the foundation of the world and was called there and he put him there. He took his third of the angels before the foundation of the world as Revelation 12 speaks of the stars or angels. He took them from God. And God says, I'm going to use you to perfect my saints. Boy, imagine that one. But, you know, you go into Babel buildings nowadays and they try to teach you that there's a great war going on and, and God is trying to fight against the evil angels. That is so far from the truth of what God's word teaches. We are under the shadow of the Almighty. He is our refuge in our fortress. If we shall die, well, we shall be absent of the body and the spirit and we'll be with him. We fear nothing, but we fear the name of the Lord. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, Satan, and from the noisome pestilence. Noisome? That's right. Isn't what we're talking about here a noisome pestilence? It's noisome or noosome. It's very noisy. Everyone's talking about it, you see? It's also, uh, you know, uh, a noosome to our life, right? Yeah, it's going to destroy our life big time it's a big noise you see but God's people don't look for signs and wonders we look we trust God by faith for without faith we cannot please him 
God is bringing all these signs. I think I have it on the wrong one there, but um, there's many different links I have. Oh, you know, that is the right one. But he is giving us all these signs of what is to come. We are not going to be destroyed because it is not the time for the bride to, uh, to be off the face of the earth yet. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler, says David the king. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fleeth by day, or flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. We are not appointed to his wrath. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. How many times does he need to tell you about the plagues or the pestilences? I guess over and over. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. If you're doing that which is his work. They shall bear thee up in their arms, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet. Who is that dragon? Revelation 12. It is Satan, the devil. No, it's not some spooky dragon that Walt Disney wants to make you believe in some cartoon fiction character. It is Satan, folks. Revelation 12 emphatically tells you that he is called the Red Dragon because God decided to call him that. And if he pleases to call him the Red Dragon, which is God awful, it makes perfect sense because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. From the very beginning, before the foundation, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him, God says to us. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. There is nothing to fear, God. I mean, there is nothing to fear, brothers and sisters, but to fear God. Trust in Jesus Christ, for the rapture is at the door. And you need to understand one other thing as I continue. I was talking with a friend. I want to show you something that's going to blow your mind a little bit. In John 10, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Who is he speaking about? Well, in verse 9, he tells, tells you, I am the door by me. If any man enter, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So who is the thief and robber? Well, he just told you it is Satan. What is Satan doing? He has a green card pass. He has a pass like an illegal alien does to get into the United States by the Dems. But this is not by the Dems. This is the authority of the Almighty. He has a pass to get into heaven. Now, why would God give Satan a pass to get into heaven another way? 
because he is the deceiver of the brethren. He is the accuser of the brethren night and day. Revelation 12 says, and he accuses the brethren for what we do that is wicked, you see, to the Almighty. He has that pass for a time. His time is coming. Soon it's going to be a very short time, huh? Through the end of the seven years of great tribulation. He's the only one who has that pass. Because God is using Satan to perfect for the perfection of his saints. You know, if people don't understand this, they will when Jesus comes and is on the face of the earth for the thousand year reign, he will, he will unveil all the mysteries for those who don't understand this. So I'm just telling you, there's only one person who has a free pass into heaven. Only one. And it is the deceiver. It is the red dragon, Satan, the devil, because he is going to accuse God, uh, you before God night and day so that God will make a decision, a sovereign decision as to what he will do with you according to your works, which proves your faith. Now, I will leave you with one big nugget. It is by faith we are saved by grace through, uh, but is not a, of our works, right? As Ephesians 2. You see, the folks, the, the truth of it is, is that I'm going to leave you with this quick one. Uh, hold on a second. In James chapter 2. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You already know that, right? Here's the mind blower that I just came up with today. Works without faith is dead also. Think about it. And may the Lord bless.